Whether you're a kitchen beginner or an experienced cook, making pasta from scratch is a great way to explore new flavors and techniques. I'll show you how to make fresh pasta step by step and you'll never open a box again. Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Celebrate TV. I'm your host, Peter Lee. Today, our celebration is all about one of my favorite things in the world, pasta. But not just any old pasta, we're going to make it from scratch. It's all about fresh pasta today. Now, pasta starts with flour. I'm going to use two different types today. The first is I'm using a double zero flour, which is an extra fine flour. It's ground really finely, but this is pretty common, pretty easy to find. The other type I'm going to use is semolina flour. And this is made from durum wheat, and it helps give the pasta that color and it adds a nice nutty flavor to it. And I like the kind that's finely ground. Also, sometimes it, you can get it's a little coarser ground, but I prefer this kind that's ground a little more finely. All right, before I get mixing this pasta up, I just want to say, guys, don't come for me. This is my recipe. It's a beginner's recipe. I know. Nona did it one way. Uncle Nunzio did it another. Your neighbor down the street did it her way, and you might do it your way. But this is a basic recipe, it's for beginners, and it's a great skill to have that you can build on. This is the double zero flour. This is a cup or about 160 grams. Now I should also tell you, you can use all purpose flour, but the double zero will give you a more tender pasta. Right on my nice clean board. Next is the semolina flour. Again, one cup, this weighs out to be about 185 grams. We need a little bit of salt, so I have just half a teaspoon. Now, this is when I like to get my hands dirty right away. I like to mix this up. It's just going to help it all combine at the end, and it gets that salt distributed through. All right, let's bring this into a nice pile. Now we need to make a well. I like to use a measuring cup and just start it in the middle. That's going to help make sure that your walls are even because you're going to be putting a lot of liquid in here. And you can adjust it around and make sure that they all look even all the way around. All right, for the liquid, I have three extra large eggs right in. I have some olive oil, extra virgin. This is a generous tablespoon. So this is you know, a tablespoon plus a little splash more right in. Now we need to start mixing. I'm going to start with a fork and gently I'm going to start breaking up the eggs and it's all on its own. It's going to start pulling in the flour. So at this point you just want to be patient and work it around and it will start pulling in some of the flour and get thicker and pastier. It's already starting to thicken up a bit and just keep going you'll get to the point where you can start putting the flour in, and that comes pretty quickly, just gently. The first time you do this, you're gonna have flour and egg everywhere. I did. But then you get the hang of it, and you'll work nice and clean. All right, you see how thick this has gotten. And as I've been mixing, I've been reinforcing the walls and just Flipping a little bit in, sprinkling some in. If tragedy struck and your walls collapsed and you had egg everywhere, don't panic. You can recover from it. You'll get messy hands, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna get out my bench scraper and I just like to bring it all in. And all of a sudden, this is gonna come together as a dough. Now I'm just using my hands to keep bringing it together. I'm not quite really kneading it yet, but I'm just trying to get it to come together as a dough. All right, this is coming together as a nice dough ball, and now we have to start kneading it. What does that mean and why do we do it? 
When we're kneading it, we're going to be developing the glutens in the flour, and that's going to help our pasta have structure and flavor, believe it or not. You just have to work it. I like to just keep folding over on, each, on itself, smooshing it down, give it a turn, fold it. You're going to do this over and over again for 10, maybe 15 minutes. And you want to keep doing it until it comes together as soft, elastic, smooth dough. Now, I will also tell you, like any dough, your environment will affect how it comes out. If it's a humid day, it may be more sticky. You may have to add a little more flour, a sprinkle here and there. If it's dry in your house, you may have to add a little more oil. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, and look, you can see this has come together. It's smooth feeling. It's elastic. When I push on it, it springs back. And it got a little harder to knead as I went on, and that's from all those glutens developing. Now, this guy needs rest. He's worked hard. So I'm going to wrap this up in plastic. I'm going to let it rest for at least 30 minutes. While that's resting, I'm going to clear the decks, and then I'll show you how to cut pasta. Here we are. It's been 30 minutes, and look at this gorgeous dough. It's changed color. It's soft. I'm going to take this out. Well, maybe. Here we go. I have a little bit of flour here. I'm going to sprinkle down lightly on my board just to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm going to use my bench scraper. And I'm going to cut this into four pieces. Just like that. I'm going to start with one. The rest of them I'm going to put back in this bag until I need them. So now we have this piece of pasta dough. What are we going to do with it? We're going to cut it. Now today I'm using a pasta cutter and roller on my KitchenAid stand mixer. You don't have to have a stand mixer to do this. You don't have to have a pasta machine. You could roll this out with a rolling pin as thinly as you want it and cut it into whatever shapes you like. Or you could have a manual kind that clamps on your counter and you just turn the crank. So I'll leave some links to some really affordable options for you. So I'm just flattening this out a bit. It's just going to help it get through the rollers to begin with. And I have some extra flour if it starts to get sticky. Sometimes it does. So I have my cutter here on the widest setting. We need to roll it and stretch it before we cut it. So on speed two, And we're just going to start feeding it through. We put it through. I like to fold it in on itself. And now put it through this way. You see it's already stretching. I like to do it twice on each way. That just makes it more even. All right, now we start making it a little more narrow, a little tighter. And again, you can always add a dusting of flour so it doesn't stick. So now we're on setting number one. We're going to go all the way down to number five. And you just watch it. You can guide it if it starts to wander a bit. Now, of course, every machine is a little different. Tightening again to number two. So follow the instructions on whatever machine that you have. There's just something so relaxing about this. Now you notice, as I'm doing this, I'm helping it go through. I'm keeping an eye on it. Sometimes it will start to go to one side or the other. The edge might tear a little bit, so I like to help guide it. All right, this is number three. And you see how long it's getting. And again, I do it twice on each setting just to make sure I get a nice even thickness. Number five, last one. Now this goes all the way down to number eight, but for the thickness I want today, number five is perfect. All right. Now we're ready to cut. Now this is going to make a very long piece of spaghetti, so I'm going to cut it 
right about there. That also is going to give me a nice straight edge here to go through the cutter. Now if you notice, when I cut it, it started retracting. That's those glutens that are elastic pulling back. There we go. Look at that. I've got spaghetti. I am going to give this a little dusting so it doesn't stick together on itself. And that is our fresh pasta. Fresh pasta cooks in maybe two, three minutes. I have a nice pot of water here. Okay, my water's back to a boil. I'm gonna put this in. Now, you cannot rely on the when it floats, it's done method. Because this is gonna float. It's so much lighter than dried pasta. I'm gonna give it a little stir. And really, this is only gonna take two or three minutes. It's three minutes and the pasta is done. And pull this out. Ooh, look. I just want a little tiny bit. And then maybe some cheese. Let it snow, cheese. So here we are, it's time for the tasting. You see how gorgeous that is? And I bet it tastes just as good. Let's find out. I'm actually gonna taste some without much sauce on it at all. Nice big bite. It's just delicate. It's soft, full of flavor. And it was so easy and fun to make. Okay, as always, if you like this episode, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell. And you'll get a new episode every week. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to hang out on my couch and watch a couple movies while I eat some pasta. While I do that, I want you to watch some of these episodes over here. So until next time, everyone, cheers.